Hello everybody and welcome back. So as you can probably tell, uh, coming into part two here, there was a bit of a jump from where we left off to here um, with some of the highlights that are right here on the waterfall and down here in the, the uh, cascading water and the bubbly area and some of the highlights and stuff here. Nothing major um, as far as that goes for um, how we got here and stuff and it's some stuff I'm going to keep going over but basically what happened was was I was painting along recording or so I thought and the um, software had stopped recording it still looked like it was recording on my end but when I went back to uh, look at it it actually had not uh, kept recording so anyway it was about uh, 20 minutes of it that was not there of me going over and explaining what we're doing here so uh, it's not there anymore so I'm going to go back over it anyway. I mean, we've got to keep painting this and, and kind of going over all of this anyway and adding highlights and so forth. So I'm just going to go back over what I did here and, and kind of show you and discuss it. So that way you can see exactly how to do what I've done and pick back up on it yourself and just kind of keep going because it's stuff that we need to keep doing anyway. And, uh, you know, like I said, um, not too uh, difficult, but um, so a bit of a jump cut, <laughs> I guess. So what I've done here is I've basically added another layer between uh, this one here, the foreground, and the background where we kind of merged everything down. We've got this highlight layer right here. Okay. And what I'm doing is I've, I've chosen a color that is not quite a white color. Let me show you real quick. So you can see it's a much lighter color, still very much below white because white would be way down here and kind of this bluish gray kind of color um, because we're trying to reserve our whites for some real sparkle uh, here towards the end. So we've got it uh, streaked in here. And then what I was doing was, and what I'm going to keep doing is, is using something like the grainy pen that I have here and using the foam brush that I have here uh, to kind of lay in uh, this here and through here. And so what I'm doing is, is I'll lay it on here and using like number two setting and then going back in with number four to kind of smudge and blend it in. And that's going to give us that feeling of like when you capture a photo in that moment of, of the exposure where it feels like the water is still rushing past. And so that's going to give us that kind of feel of, of that and that water dripping. So that's kind of what I'm doing here with it. And you can kind of see where this is set up like this, uh, where it kind of feels like it's smoothed down. The same thing for the ripples and everything here and just the stuff along here. If you can hear my dog, she's just decided that she doesn't like where it is in the front yard. So, um, so I'm just going to pick this back up and kind of show you what I was doing before and go over it because I need to obviously highlight this and highlight this. Now some of this we're going to leave in shadow and we're going to come back with a similar color but add a little bit more blue to it. So I'm going to show you that real quick. So I'm going to push four and I've got the grainy pen selected still and I'm going to use my left bracket to bring my size down and I'm just going to come back over this and keep going in the direction of the waterfall just kind of soften it and this is also where you see how I've got the curve going like this this is also where you want to kind of follow that curve and bring it around and you also want to leave gaps okay so in other words don't fill this in completely everywhere so leave some gaps here and there of this darker color below it and that's going to give you that nice feel of shadow and light playing around in the water, like so.
and you don't have to smudge it all out. You can leave some spots here and there where it's a little bit more there, and then you can push either one or two and just kind of come back in. Streak in some spots here and there, leaving in where maybe some pieces are coming around. Now this brush does size, change its size with uh, pressure, but you can feel free to use the bracket keys to lower that size as well. And then I just kind of shakingly go back and forth following the direction. And any of these curved spots here, that's going to pick up more light there. And think about, all right, where am I going to have some more high points of light and shadow kind of hitting around? Then hit four again. And kind of blur it back. Again, you don't have to blur all of it. That starts to give you that nice feeling of water rushing past. Spill over some of the rocks. Maybe it's really you know picking up in the splashing. This could be like when maybe a storm surge and some of the water is starting to really kick off down through here. Like so. And maybe give a little bit more of a surge down here. And again, four. And then some of this back here, I'm going to give it just a few spots of some of this color. But not as much. Maybe so like it's maybe some reflective light. Okay. So something like that. I'm up here. I want this to be like it's kind of cascading over. And this is where you can use the water and light to build your form. So that kind of gives it that feeling that it's ducking behind the rock there. And then just kind of keep building it up. Like so. And then hit four. Like so. So now that's really cascading down. I'll put a few spots of it kind of kicking over. Like so. Or maybe that water's really jumping over that rock, kind of splashing up against it. Add some dynamic look to it and then just kind of Smear it over. Like so. Okay. So now what I want to do is over here, 
I'm going to come back to here and I want to go over to a little bit more blue. Come down a little bit and add some of this blue in here, kind of like we were just doing with the white. But I want this to have some of this bluish purple color to it so that it feels like it's getting some light, but it's more of a reflected blue light. Just use four to kind of smudge it all together a little bit more. And then I can add a little bit of that here and there to kind of tie some of the color together. Just shadow and reflected light, maybe. You don't have to overdo it, just a little bit here and there kind of help bring the color harmony together. Now these light, these highlights down here are literally just grab a little bit of this light color and then just randomly tapping in kind of a horizontal fashion like that. Just real quick taps. All right, so I'm going to grab this bluish color again. And I want to put in just some streaks of water dripping down. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw down. And I'm going to go a little bit thicker at the end. Like that. So just kind of draw it down and a little bit thicker at the end. Real light, a little bit thicker. Light, a little bit thicker. I'll kind of give the feeling that it's water running down. Again, you can use this to really sell the direction that the rocks are. The form of them. Okay. But again, if this is like a storm surge, it's, you know, can be starting to overrun the banks a little bit. You're catching it right before it does that. Maybe it's right after it did it, you know. Who knows? I just think that adds some really cool dynamic you know, movement to it. All right, so hit the period button, kind of pull back a little bit and take a look at it. So I think that gives us some really interesting movement to it. I want to add just a few more highlights because we kind of lost those a little bit. Here, just for some of that reflected light kind of feel. We just don't want that to look wet. thing up here, just unlike these kind of arcing areas where it would jut out. Something that gives us an interesting look. Now I want to add in some of this greenery <clears throat> to the rocks and stuff here too. So I'm going to add a new layer. This will be kind of in front of the waterfalls for the most part. And we'll go with the 
bush brush. We're going to bring it down in size. And let's go with kind of this greenish color here. Let's just kind of in some of these cracks and crevices. Makes sense. Kind of tuck in some bushes like so. I think that kind of helps set the rocks back a little bit. And maybe just put a few down here. Maybe the water's starting to grow and this is really starting to overrun it. Something like that. So yeah, I think that <clears throat> I think that works. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this cadmium yellow. I'm gonna throw that just slightly on a few of those, and then I'm gonna grab four. Blending. And that's going to give us start giving us a little bit of that direction of light. That's for the most part, we've had a kind of a diffused light. This is going to kind of start pulling our eye in. And I don't want it everywhere. We're just going to kind of put it around and really start pulling our eye in towards the middle here. So see how that's kind of really focusing us in. So let's even go up another step. Turn off the pigment, go to uh, edge. Bring that down a little bit. Maybe something like that to help. That feeling kind of cascading in. And then hit four and just kind of soften it. that a little bit. Switch this old brush and just stay on five so I'm erasing this. I don't want that yellowish color there. So that really kind of pulls it in. I'm going to switch to this color here. 
ones start really kind of pulling out paints. Again, think about my light coming from this direction. I don't want to highlight everything per se, but. Switch over. I've got the mini oils. I'm going to go over to the oil pigments. Maybe grab something like this gray sand. Make some of this. Down here. Switch to a different brush, which one the sea foam might give us a different blend. So I want kind of a softer Maybe that's a little bit better. Because I want kind of a modeled like maybe it's really cutting through some leaves. I feel. And so all I'm doing is pushing. I put it on the linear dodge, and then I've got this uh, the color for it, and then just kind of splotching it in, switching to four. Well, that actually turned it back to one. Switching to four. And then just kind of moving it around rather randomly, which gives it that kind of a feel. You can switch back to five and then just kind of splotch it out a little bit here and there. Erase it. And that's going to give you that feeling of it kind of hitting through and getting some of that light cascaded on it. And the sea foam really blends it out softly. And you can switch to three and two and just kind of play around with it. But this is, again, this is where you want to just kind of take your time and play around with it and stuff. And I'm kind of going a little bit fast here because I don't want to spend forever with you guys watching this, trying to do this. I'm just trying to show you the different techniques of doing it so that way you can play around with it on your own. See how that gives you that really kind of a cool, rocky look? You can come down here in the water and do the same kind of a thing. The highlights. Come over and add the little leaves. Now for the water and the rocks, using this color works really well, okay? So I would highly recommend, you know, maybe go with something like that for these and kind of keep going through these with these. For the leaves and stuff, you may want to switch like maybe this cadmium green or so. That could be a good one. Um, or even like staying with this, and then coming straight across so that you're more of this like light sage kind of green color. And something like that. And that'll give it that really kind of a sparkle. And you can switch to something like these tree brushes. Again, bring your size down, zoom in, and switch to, you know, the different size or something. It's so like I was saying, you can zoom in and 
I had to stop there and save it real quick. Um, but you can just kind of come in and add in some stuff here. Now these are transparent, so this is almost like adding a um, a wash over top. So zoomed in, it's going to look kind of weird. But when you're zoomed back out to like, uh, you know, like 100% right here, which is where this is, it's going to look, you know, a little bit more interesting. Okay. And again, take your time, play around with it. Get it how you like it. If you don't like something, you know, switch back to something else. Okay. Feel free to like put it in, put it on five and erase some of it. Um, add some back. Use the different brushes. I like to sit here and just kind of play around with the different brushes and get the feel and look for what I want get some kind of cool effects every now and then that I'm like hey I like that one and just kind of get a pop of color that I like or that I think is kind of cool you know and sometimes you may want to increase the brush size to get kind of the, the look that you want Don't be afraid to undo and redo and, and like I said, hit five and erase and cut away and so forth. So, but I think for doing some of this rocky parts, like I said, this sea foam one works really great. So just kind of add in. And take away a little bit and then smudge a little bit just gives kind of a neat look and feel and especially if you start thinking about okay what about if lights cutting through some of it you know like leaves are off in the distance and it's cutting through See, it gives kind of a really cool effect, if you ask me. And hey, it's my painting, so I like it. All right. A few more over here. Maybe something like that. Increase that brush stroke size so I can get a really kind of a good swath of color. Something like that. I think that really breaks up that grayish tone. Kind of gives it a neat, neat effect. And maybe just a little bit up here as well. Pulls your eye around a little bit better. There we go. Just kind of glazing the color on it, you know? Let's switch back over here. Maybe go over to our grass brushes. So, probably need to add grass down here a little bit. And I just noticed I got a little bit of overspray up here, so I'm going to get rid of that real quick. Just switch to the eraser. I think this looks a little weird.
So what I may do here is go back to my favorite brushes. Switch that to four. Just kind of leave that off a little bit. Let me switch that down to the I think they're kind of stopping to abruptly. Follow some of these their trees. There we go. Just gotta be aware of that, you know. Pay attention to what's around it so that it kind of blends into the area and makes sense. So the light's kind of cascading around it. Looks better. It's not quite as stark. I guess it's the feeling of it kind of falling back into the area. I didn't zoom out enough to look at that, so always make sure you do that. Zoom out more. I'm going to pull a few of these lighter grasses in here. Just to kind of tie in some of that lighter highlight. I'm just kind of blending some of these bases back down a little bit. Okay, but I think that kind of pulls it all together a little bit. Lightly go over some of these where I've got some odd ends here where it kind of grabbed a little bit and just kind of soften it back into the base just so it's not like really weird little curlies. Stuff like that. Now what I'm doing is looking for odd transition points. Things that seem kind of weird and kind of, you know, just don't look like they blend right. I think for the most part a lot of this looks okay. 
We're zoomed in a little past 100, so some of this is going to be a little blurred, but that's fine. But that's not really what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just, you know, harsh transitions. I like the idea of these little like sticks and twigs kind of sticking out here and there. It gives it a nice feeling transition. Okay, so I think that'll work. See, this is kind of weird looking, so let's blend that in a little bit. Let's come back up to this area. Kind of go a little sharper. Push that down a little bit. It pushes that behind it. Maybe bring that line out a little bit. Just add a little bit of something there like that. Four. Just kind of soften it back into it. So this is really just kind of putting the icing on the cake kind of stuff. Making sure stuff reads behind other stuff. Which I think it all does. So I think we're good that bringing that up a little bit here can help that look like it's really separating out and just you know throw a little color on here hitting four Smearing it a little bit makes that look a little bit more defined as a rock. Gives that a little wrap around water coming down it. Like so. So yeah, I think we're you know I think we're pretty much approaching done with this. Um, kind of wanted to add you know a few maybe flowers here and there, just some uh, different things. Maybe just a little bit of a. Uh, A wildflower. Just a little something here and there to add some interest.
little blue flower here and there. I don't know, I kind of like the little white and blues. I think they're pretty. The major just little dots. Something like that. Eh, too much. And too much. Let's add one more layer, and let's add, with another linear dodge, select Maybe something like that. For now, let's go with the airbrush. And let's go with let's go with the Naples yellow. The opacity is 10. We're just gonna put that in there a little bit like so. And do control D and we'll do view filter Gaussian blur maybe something like 40 apply bring the and then we'll hit T A shift so we can just kind of stretch it a little bit. Maybe something like that. And go to filter brightness. Just kind of seeing how it looks. I'm going to delete that. I don't think that quite worked. Airbrush. Let's try the titanium. Naples on top, a touch of cad yellow. A little bit at the bottom as well to kind of go up. Here in the middle we're just kind of leaving. Now control D. Now filter, now Gaussian blur. Twenty-five. Now you can do a linear dodge, or you can do overlay. Overlay is going to be a little bit lighter, so you can bring it up. Like so. Contrast. It keeps a little bit more of the color. You can also do stuff like, you know, 
hard light, which keeps more of the yellow. Just overlay. If you do overlay, you're going to need to bring it up to like 65 or something. Give you kind of that street light kind of a feel. Because you can do that, and then you can take, for example, switch back over to something like the old brush, bring that up in size, switch to five, and then you can do something like that, where you're just kind of erasing part of it, and you get more of that street light kind of a feel, and then you can go back to the blur that down to where it's only like 10 like so without it with it so I think it gives it kind of an interesting feel anyway I'm gonna stop there because otherwise I'm just kind of piddling you know and you don't want to really putter around with it too much because you just start detracting so I hope you got something out of this. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, there's a lot of different things we went over with this. <coughs> Excuse me. But I enjoyed this one. I think it's a fun one. Took a little bit longer than normal, but um, we got a lot of depth on this one, I think. And so, um, yeah, as normal, leave me any questions or comments or anything below, and I will be more than happy to answer. Thanks, and I'll see you on the next one.